Can a river be a mother? Can humanity in birth, in rites of passage, and in death find solace in the arms of a river? Yes, it can, if the river happens to be Ganga. My name is Loke Shori and I am a cultural anthropologist. For over 10 years, I have been researching the various aspects that make Ganga so special for mankind. Come with me as we, through the series supported by ATCS, take a peek into little known aspects of the Mother River in her journey through the Himalayas. The central Himalayas truly stand apart as a cultural entity. While they act as a wall between India and Central Asia, they rarely divide the waters between the two land masses. From west to east, perennial snow-fed rivers of great strength and beauty, Yamuna, Bhagirathi, Mandakini, Alaknanda and Kali emerge from the mouths of immense glaciers with the richest of cultural associations. The gently flowing deep blue waters of the Alaknanda converge with the turbulent and turquoise waters of the Bhagirathi to form Ganga proper at Devaprayag. At this ancient spot, Lord Rama, having slain the learned but misguided Brahmin, Ravan, in the battle at Lanka, is said to have practiced severe penance. From here, the Ganga, after its final confluence among the five in the Himalayas, flows to the rim of the Bay of Bengal, nearly 1700 kilometers away. Devaprayag, or the confluence of the divinities, is a spot that grants great spiritual bliss and has long been a center where pilgrimage combined with spirituality and the yogic sciences have flourished. But the story of any significant center of learning unfolds only when one has visited the villages around. The settlements in this region, known as Garhwal, are far-flung and can generally be approached only on foot. In narrow valleys situated at some distance from the settlement of Devaprayag, scattered over terraced fields amongst sparsely populated villages, lie the five east-facing temples of Palethi. Why are these temples so special? I decided to find out and trekked up to Palethi through terraced fields, walking past beautiful abandoned Himalayan homes, their tibaris or door frames carved out of wood, their roofs covered with black slate tiles, locally called Patal. I arrived at one such beautiful and remote stone temple. The exquisite temple, built like the leaning tower of Pisa, is slanting precariously, thanks to insensitive additions in concrete to the stone structure. The temple, shaken but intact in its antiquity, is dedicated to Shiva, but also contains a sculpture of a reclining Vishnu. The images here point to the fact that a tradition of pilgrimage existed in the region much before the 6th century CE. Built in the Negara style, this and the other temples of Paleti are probably the earliest in the entire Himalayan region. I returned to Devaprayag town and on a terrace in the upper part of the village, I come to the temple of Raghunathji. Built out of huge stones, pyramidal in form, 
and capped with a white cupola. This temple in fact appears a much magnified version of the temple at Palethi. Perhaps the oldest of the Indian temples dedicated to Lord Rama, it is considered one of the 108 Divyadeshans or sacred sites of Lord Vishnu. It is believed that Lord Rama's footprints are found on the Ramakunda at the confluence while a stone throne is considered to be his seat. The names of a few travellers in Brahmi, ornamental Brahmi and Devanagari scripts are incised on a cliff face abutting the confluence. These inscriptions also bear footprints and stairs carved out of sheer stone. The script dates the temple to much before the 6th century. Inside the temple, more inscriptions indicate that the region was ruled by Raja Prithvi Shah in 1664. Dev Prayag is encircled by three peaks, Kidhanchal Parvat, right behind the Raghunathji temple, Narsinghanchal Parvat in front and Dashrathanchal Parvat on the top right. Here on the Dashrathanchal, a renowned teacher, Acharya Pandit Chakradhar Joshi, a scholar in astronomy, Ayurveda and astrology, established the Nakshatra Vedashala, an observatory in the year 1946. Not only did he observe celestial bodies from here, but he also published his observations and research on spatial objects and instruments such as Dhruva Yantra, Jalghati Yantra, Dwada Sangula Sanku, Sauraya Yantra and the Yantra Raja. The observatory is well equipped with several telescopes and books to support research in all the three disciplines of astronomy, astrology and Ayurveda. It has a substantial archive too. The observatory also has in its collection about 3,000 rare manuscripts, some of them inscribed on palm leaf. Apart from modern scientific equipment, one can also see ancient yantras or astrological instruments like the Surya Ghati and Dhruv Ghati that point towards the wealth of traditional knowledge found in this place. Dr. Prabhakar Joshi is currently the caretaker of this observatory. Exploring the space where the Ganga comes to be, I realize that Deva Prayag is not just a confluence of two great rivers, but it is also a meeting point of modern astronomy with the ancient disciplines of astrology and Ayurveda. Truly, this is a place where the Maryada Purushottam, Rama, the ultimate spiritual being would have wanted to meditate.